make some noise! South City! It's been called the English disease. Once you've experienced what it's like, then there's no coming away from it. The police clamp down, but the yobs just won't go away. It's an addiction, and that's the bottom line. Once a hooligan, always a hooligan. For some, the buzz comes at a huge cost. Don't cry and be like a little baby if you get sent to prison. And it's all linked to the beautiful game. No retreat, no surrender. It's a strike and fear into the opposing firm. You don't get that from fucking tennis, do you? Meet the men who are football hooligans and proud. outside the centre of the universe. This is Jason Mariner, one of Britain's most notorious football hooligans. He's been called the general of the Chelsea Headhunters, a tribe with a reputation for trouble. Oh, this is where the away fans used to go in. Jason's a 46-year-old lout, jailed twice for football violence and now on an eight-year ban from all matches. Football's a very small part of the day, it's 90 minutes. It's a build-up before, afterwards. The build-up starts on a Thursday. When you come into a ground, you want to be, like, you know, anxious, excited. You know, you want mood change. You know, oh, oh that was a bit warm, that was a bit, that was a bit strong, that could have been naughty there. If there's trouble, or if, there, if there's trouble brewing, you, you can feel it, you can naturally feel it in the air. Despite Jason's infamous behaviour, he is a bit of a celebrity. You all right, yeah? Even with fans of arch rivals. Yeah, yeah sweet. Oh, not talk them. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> That's all right, mate. That's for my mates and all my boys at Chelsea, yeah? There we go. Thank you. Nice, mate. Yeah. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Yeah. Good luck with the league. Yeah. Cheers, mate. But why do rival fans want snaps with Jason? Well, it's because when the headhunters kick off, he's often centre stage. This bit of footage I'm going to show you, this is from 2010. The disorder and between Chelsea and Cardiff. You can clearly see me there. As you can see, there's bits and pieces have been thrown. Numerous missiles have been thrown. Come on! Middle of the road with a camera shouting out my name. <laughs> There's a big fat Welsh gazer on the floor. I wish I'd kick him straight. Is that to be truthful? Police were here, like in the middle, trying to trying to separate the both. They made a big thing out of it and what have you. You know. It's a little bit backwards and forwards, nothing special. Nothing special to Jason, maybe. But there were a total of 63 convictions. A copper got his jaw broken. And Jason was banged up for two years for violent conduct. At the end of the day, this is the hazards of the job. Don't cry and be like a little baby if you get sent to prison. Lee Doran is a football hooligan who started his fighting career in the school playground. He's just got his third ban, four years, covering every ground in the country. So finding the gates open at Spotland is a rare treat because Lee has Rochdale coursing through his veins. Right, tell us when you're ready. Football hooliganism is all about belonging to an unofficial tribe of fans. They support their team, but the clubs condemn their behaviour. And Lee's a leading player with Rochdale's firm, The Chosen Few. This is where all old chosen few sit. Um, when we score, we all rush forward to these barriers here to 
try and say like fuck off to, to the away supporters. After a while, started getting into into different things and that, and the age of 13, I started to watch the fight. The chosen few's latest big dust up was at the start of last season. It was um, Hartlepool at home. We ended up beating them 3 0. What surprised me was it was an all police game. There were about 10 of us, um, there were about 50 of them. It was here where all the fighting took place. Um, one, one tried punching me, I dodged him, hit him. I hit another one, um, he went on the floor and at, at that time it was just everyone, we were all over the place. The brawl landed Lee with his latest ban. It's a buzz, it is a buzz, better than any drug in the world. Yeah, love it, love it. <laughs> Jay Butler is part of a newer breed of soccer yob. He has a passion for a scrap and the designer clothes that hooligans wear. It's total quality, you know. It's, yeah, I love all this stuff. But Jay's different because he fights with a UK-wide tribe called Casuals United. And his taste for the gear and the fear started when he was just a kid. There's probably something in me. I just didn't want to be boring like the same as the rest, you know. I wanted a bit of excitement and that. And then, you know, that, that's, that's how I found football, you know. Kind of got introduced to all the decent lads and they just had a different demeanour about themselves. It was a lot more menacing and interesting, you know. Now he's a married 28-year-old white van man who just can't get his head around why anyone has a problem with what makes him tick. Football hooliganism is um, deemed fucking awful for some reason, and that, that's, what, that's what boils my piss. I'd say just get your head out, out your fucking ass. Like other people like tennis or rock climbing, that's where they get their buzz, I, I don't know. Um, me, I need a bit more, you know, I need something what, what's wrong because it feels right. It's a free country, I do what I want. People just think we're mindless, they, they're just so fucking thick, they think we'll just get pissed and whack anyone or cause large-scale disorder like that, but, you know, I want people to see how it, how it really is, how um, it's not like that. You need to have your wits about you, you need to be streetwise. No running, if you run, that is the worst thing you can fucking do, because no one will ever trust you again. So you just got to steam, it's um, our motto is no retreat, no surrender. You know, striking fear into the opposing firm. You don't get that from fucking tennis, do you? Football bad boys are always on the lookout for the next big event. That's somebody's house on fire there. That's somebody's house on fire. But sometimes things don't live up to expectations. Barbecue. <laughs> If it would have been a fire and that, I would have been like kicking the door in to drag somebody out. Shane Wharton has always wanted to be at the front line. He's a notorious football hooligan with 20 convictions and four bans for soccer violence. His first love is Chester FC and his local tribe, the Chester 125s. All right, uh, welcome to my casual football bedroom if you'd like to come this way and that way. This is all my uh, Chester memorabilia here, and I'm very proud of the fact that, that like, uh, you know, this was in England from 1980 at the race course. England v Wales went off everywhere that day, and that like everyone was fighting with everyone. That's still got the beer stains on and a couple of blood stains on there. Crime prevention, like, think if I look at that, don't push it for that up and that. Ah, oh, yeah. What, what did, you, did you say you were looking for again? <laughs> The only people that walk in this room and the only people that are one in this room are people like me, British, English, and like, you know what I mean? Got to have a soft swat with Chester. <laughs> it's quite a big deal and that, like, you know what I mean? That's why I live on my own. <laughs> Shane also supports Casuals United, a movement embracing modern football hooliganism. Formed just five years ago, it's been adopted by a loose band of like-minded yobs drawn from firms across the country. Club rivalries are ignored. The casuals fight side by side. 
people betray, like, you know what I mean, casuals today, they're all hooligans, none of them do any good at anything, like, you know, for anybody else. But we do, like, loads of good things and that for people, and that we're the good guys and that, as far as I'm concerned. But whether we're in prison and that, like, you know what I mean, beating paedophiles up who deserve it, at least you know that they're getting justice and that, like, on the inside and that, like, off me and the likes of me all over the country. And Casuals United definitely play on the right wing. Me gollywog is rob robbing all me clothes. Look, he's got me Burberry visor on and that, like me, I am sexy chair. And I'm surprised he hasn't robbed me remote control from me telly. <laughs> Some people find that offensive and that, like, to me, it's just a, it's just a friendly golly and I collect them. Football hooligan and proud Jay Butler is a mad keen Bristol City fan. But it's his Casuals United teammates who help him put the world to rights. With all my patriotic movement, um, most of the lads are football lads. And if um, anyone pisses, pisses off like the like Muslims or the left wing or anything like that, we'll, we'll go out together and uh, peacefully protest. Like, so, and it, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I always, always stand up for what I believe in. Uh, Mr Gollywog, that is. I think he represents political correctness gone wrong. <laughs> I haven't got a problem with colour or anything, but people get pissed off by you buying that kind of stuff, so I bought it to piss people off, like, you know. Do you want some water, Mohammed? Here you go. You ain't drink it now, I made it from me. <laughs> yeah, that's my cat, yeah. O always crying, he is. Yeah, Mohammed, because it's offensive to Muslims to call anyone who isn't human or a Muslim Mohammed, so they'll probably all want to fucking chop his head off now, like, if they see him. <laughs> Mohammed has left the building. <laughs> got quite a few tattoos. Um, I've got um, English Defence League with the old Knights Templar badge. Um, I used to be in the EDL, but not anymore, more into the casuals. Um, got England across my back. It's uh, not really to do just with the football, it's more to do with the country. I've got 1312 on the back of my neck. Um, that uh, stands for ACAB, all, all cops are bastards. But it's not just the cops. Jay hates anything that stops him getting to rival fans, left-wingers, anyone who's up for it. Growing up to someone like an, an opposing firm, it's a bit like foreplay. Just, you know it's going to happen, you get all the shouting, screaming, bottles, bricks, whatever. It just happens naturally, you know, in the look of the draw. If you just catch eye contact, it's like, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, OK, and then... There's no rules as such, really. You just go on until you kick the other person's head in or until the old bill turn up. It was good, like, let's a bit of fucking stress out. <laughs> the courts rightly take a very dim view of football violence, but hooligans like 37 year old Rochdale bad boy Lee Doran simply don't care. I'm after, like, danger. It is a, a feeling on its own. Football violence is a feeling on, on its own. I can't explain it. And he gets his kicks, even when he's on the receiving end. I'm seeing him there getting his head kicked in. Next minute, somebody banged me. I ended up flying. <laughs> I come off my feet and look, going towards the wall, hit the wall with my head, and I thought, oh my god, please, please, no one stick a blade in me. They, they nipped my cap and everything. <laughs> Brad for the wankers. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> I love fear. That's just me. So Lee craves trouble even though every fight could be his last. Um, I was in intensive care um, for a week. Um, I had a paving slab smashed over my head. Um, top of my head there. Um, don't know if you can see it. I, I lost about five pints of blood. Right, there's actually a bone leaning down on my brain. Um, any, any punch I get towards the head, it could, it could kill me. Obviously, I don't want to die, but it's the, the fear of death that I'll push myself towards. Yeah, I love it. It's an addiction, and that's the bottom line. 
You can't tell me it ain't an addiction. And Jason Mariner's habit landed him in the nick twice. So now the former Chelsea headhunter shies away from live action. That way, his obsession can't get the better of him. I believe every addict has, 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 has something in their head. It's fighting with someone in their head. Staten kidney, mine's staten kidney. I call him Sydney, it's this side. This side, side starts, starts wearing with this side. Fuck off, man. Yeah. Let's say for arguments, like we get a good cup draw. That is pony. All the lads are going and this, that and the other, you think, fuck me. Yeah, I'll fancy a bit of that, I'll fancy a bit of that. But that's him talking. That's, Sid, that's Sydney talking, that's him talking up there. You, you're fighting against it all the time, it's a battle, it's a battle. And it's just uh, who wins the battle in your head, you know what I mean? Either, either Jason wins it or Sydney wins it. Rochdale diehard Lee has also found a couple of ways to deal with his addiction now that he's banned from matches. And they both rely on the internet. Number one is getting a fix online, sharing video violence with his mates. Well, at the time, all the rest come out of the pub. What the fuck? Get a cup of air on his fucking ass. If you're in that mode, like the adrenaline mode, you, you still don't give a fuck. You, you still want to fucking rip the guy's head off. Yeah. Fucking brilliant, that fight. Shoes very well, so. Lee's second solution for his addiction is another new dimension to modern football yobbery. He set up an online page called Football Hooligan Banter, and there's clearly an appetite for what's dished up because 40,000 fans have joined. I'm proud of the group. Really, really proud. Um, that, that was my main aim, to get a lot of different mixed clubs to, to like, get the banter going. Um, but, I'm, like I said, never expected it to, to be as big as what it, what it is. This is Guyan um, from Halifax. Um, he's one of my admin on my group. The site's a forum for hooligans, wannabes and plenty of banter. <laughs> <laughs> With mine being, like, fucking nearly a million hits last month, Obviously, it's going to be watched by Facebook, so we have got to keep a close eye on it. Um, there's certain things you're not allowed to bring into a banter. Paedophilia, nonce, mm -hmm. um, racism, um, family. People people are, are just disrespectful, wankers and that, like... Oh, I'd love to grip a few of them and that. I would. Cos I'd, I'd... I would, I'd, I'd kick off. I'd smash them in. Back on the front line, Bristol City fan and Casuals United diehard Jay Butler is a modern day hooligan keeping up appearances. Yeah, you gotta look smart when you rock up in the town, you know, and just fucking steam in and fucking give it to them, you know? You don't wanna rock up like a bunch of tramps, really, do you? So today, Jay's checking out the latest gear. Expensive labels are all the rage for Casuals United. They're almost as important as the violence. Originally, it was just to throw the old bill off back in the day, um, looking smart and casual and that. that. That's when I ended up buying all the expensive gear and that. God, yeah, that one's um, 325, which is not bad, actually. That, that badge is like kind of our identity, really. It's, um, we, all, we all wear it and everybody in the know knows what it means. And the hooligan dress code helps to keep the peaceful fans out of the firing line. If it's someone like in, um, I don't know, Bristol City top, you, you know, they're, they're just there for the game. That's, that's what's known as in the trade. We call them scarfers or shirters. So they, they just don't get touched, like... I think I'm going to try one of each of these on, just make my mind up, really. But while Jay's checking out his latest bargain, in Chester, Shane has a more urgent need to sort out his gear. He has a massive game coming up at the weekend. It's a local derby with Wrexham and there's a history of trouble. I spend literally half an hour thinking about what I'm going to wear before I go to a match. As you can see, the, the rail's jam-packed with them and that, like, you know, that's, that's one of my favourites, that, like, but it's a bit of a come-and-get-me jacket. You tend to stand out a little bit too much in the crowd and that, like, you know, even better, 
you never like want to hide away from that dodgy person in your life. You can turn it round. And the check jacket now becomes a nice little casual green. Then you've got your there, uh, your Burberry scarf, which always looks nice in the winter, and that when you're there, uh, trying to hide your face. I got that off a lad from Shrewsbury, like, uh, as he tried to give me a sly dig in the head and that. I pulled the scarf and that, like, and uh, nearly strangled him. But thanks for that, mate, anyway. Shane's 47. He's a nightclub doorman who says he's given up hooliganism. But this match is still a very big deal. This is England v Wales, and a whole lot more. This is the red hand flag of Ulster, cos us uh, Chester, Chester City fans are well proud to be loyal to the Crown. Whereas you'll find Wrexham, they're loyal to the IRA and Sinn Féin and uh, to the sons of Glundua and the Welsh Nationalists. And that says a lot for me and that, like that says, like, you know what I mean? Rangers, Ibrox, proud to be British. Noel Hughes, a.k.a. Yozza, is another long-standing member of the Chester 125s. The 59-year-old knows Wrexham are their biggest rivals. Fights and arrests are commonplace. But hooligans usually play their cards close to their chests, so if anything is planned, he won't be telling us. Some people say it's a hatred between us both. I possibly wouldn't go that far. I'd say it's a, it's a healthy rivalry, which we enjoy. But as we see, we're outside Chester Town Hall. Um, four sides to the tower, but only three clocks. And we've all heard the saying, we wouldn't give people the time of day. So if you walk down the road, look up the far side, the side that faces Wales, there's no clock face, which means they wouldn't give the Welsh the time of day. And as the clock ticks down to tomorrow's match, a crucial relegation battle, the crew is still acting cool. All right, cheers to a Chester victory tomorrow and that like, and uh, a nice peaceful day like the Though Yozza says they won't be putting up with any nonsense. They might do something. It's going to incite people. When you go, your mates go, you go with them. Simple as that. No holding back, is it? <laughs> so tomorrow, the crew will be ready for whatever the Welsh might throw at them. Yeah. It's the day of the biggest match of the season for the Chester 125 firm, and the crew is out in force. Today, it's the local derby with Wrexham, Chester's biggest rivals. It's England v Wales. Ex-bad boy Shane Wharton has decided to stay in the crowd. So today, Chester diehard Yozza is taking control. Get them all to fucking slow down here now. Get them all to stop here now. It's Chester's biggest crowd of the season, more than 4,000. It's hardly Premier League, but a few are still expecting some serious action. Big turnout here, the lads. So the team should turn out as well for those. There's only one winner. There's only one winner. winner. My name's Jay Whitefruit. I'll do what I want. We're Chester FC. We do it. Well, young bucks, they're like... They're just crazy. They love it. They love it. I fucking love Chester. I'll do what I want. Best firm I've seen out in years, this. Every man is dogged out there today for this. They come in looking for us. Well, I've met this, haven't they? Today could be payback. I'm not saying anything like that, but, you know, if they bring it on, they bring it on. If they come into town later and start getting drinking down them, and start gobbing off, then can't be responsible for what happens to me. Let's make some noise! It's our fucking city! This match has a reputation for trouble, and the cops know only too well that it won't take much for something to kick off. So they're also out in force, 150 officers and an eye in the sky.
But the match doesn't live up to the hype. There's more action on the terraces than on the pitch, and the cops are watching every move. A victory would ultimately have saved Chester from relegation, but it ends nil-nil. There was only one winner. The police will look at it as a result, won't they? They'll think it's a, it's a great victory for them that they've had no trouble. I mean, what was on the day, how many arrests, I really don't know. I think someone threw a flare or something, I don't know. There's a couple maybe for drunk and disorderly afterwards. The police are clearly determined to keep all games trouble-free for peaceful fans. About 2,500 hooligans have banning orders. They can't go to any games, and before England play away, they have to hand in their passports. Now, with cameras everywhere, it's increasingly difficult for Yobbs to get away with anything at a match. Rochdale hooligan Lee and his mate Guyan think what happened in Chester is a saddening sign of the times. Football ain't the game it used to be. What they're trying to do is, is like, stop, stop you all singing and that, and just be sat there like miserable bastards or whatever. When when your team scores, you just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good goal, that. Good goal. It's all financed. Everything is fixed towards finance. They're just taking everything away from your working class. People think like you, you're hooligan, you, you're scum. You, you've got no no respect for the football club. Fuck off, man. I, I love my I love my club. You know what I mean? Like hooligans are passionate. Do you know what? You're not allowed to be passionate and proud in this country. Like, all of a sudden, like, you're a dog for being passionate and proud. Well, if that's the way it is, I'm a dog. Hooligan is just this stigma, and it's like, it's what the media think sells. And Jason Mariner is proof of that. The ex-Chelsea headhunter has already written one book and started another, as he turns his notoriety into cash. If I can see an opportunity to turn something round, I'll turn it round. If I can make money out of it, that's what I'll do. It's only, it's only the jealous people that, 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 that find it sore, really, do you know what I mean? So, what do you, you say to them? Fuck them. Now, this market trader is hoping his football hooligan story can make it onto the big screen. Yeah, I'm here to see uh, John Softcott today. He's the youngest... Uh, British film producer who is out there at the moment with his finger on the pulse, you know. He knows what the, the, the British public want to see. I'm looking forward to working with Jason because he's a nice guy and he's very good with people and, and you know, I've seen people come up to him and, and be really impressed to meet him and, you know, he's a hero to some people. Come in. Jason's first jail term came after an undercover investigation John? by a journal called McIntyre. Yeah. Well, mate, Good you? Yeah, not bad, you mate? not bad. John thinks that's the spin for the movie. So, uh, where are we up to now? Well, I think I've actually cracked how we can do your story on film. Yeah. Um, have you seen that movie, Frost Nixon? Um, I've seen little bits. I haven't actually watched the whole film, no. OK, because what I was thinking was, you know, I don't just want to do another football hooligan yeah, movie, yeah. and obviously your story is a bit different. Yeah. But if we do a kind of traditional football movie and then turn it into Frost Nixon with you and McIntyre, yeah. then it makes it something really original and fresh, and it's not just another geezer movie. No, I think that's got an excellent twist to it, an excellent twist and tell. So you start with some football hooligan violence in the movie, and then you have this weird little cut, and there's this guy who moves in next door to you, and you never suspect, but then it's this kind of epic battle of wits between two very different people. And as you say, it's not just a, a film of, like, you know, the lads in the pub drinking, wearing their clothes, going out on the street, having an ambush. And I mean, obviously, that's in it, because that's what happens. Of course. But, um, yeah, I think that's, that's going to... That'd be wicked, yeah. If, um, that sounds good, yeah. Back in Greater Manchester, it's now the turn of Rochdale's chosen few to look forward to a huge game in the fourth tier of English football. Lee Doran is banned from all matches, but his long-time mate Mildew isn't going to miss out. Right, right, right. Come on. Easy, man. Up the day. We win Saturday and all the other fixtures go all right for us. We get the cup. 
He's 48 with nine kids and five grandkids, but he's still up for it. Up the jail, come on! I've got, I've got balls. That's, this is what you fucking do here, come on, and keep going so you connect. I like that bit. Promotion's already in the bag, so it'll be a huge celebration, whatever. Got my tickets Saturday for the game. Up the Dale. Come on, Rochdale. Get in there. So, tickets in pockets, Mildew's off to his local for some pre match banter with Wigsy, Foggy, and a man who's not meant to go to the match, Lee Doran. We've got the chance of winning fucking League Two. I'm fucking not missing that for fucking yeah. no one. Hey, I bet you. Fuck it, the fucking it, old Bill. Where's my pint as well? You go yeah, and got, is that, you got your own. <laughs> you got, yeah, you got your own. You're right, Jack. Yeah, I'm back. Go on, Jack. <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. Ain't it fucking ironic? The two times that Rochdale have been fucking promoted, you've been banned. Yeah. You didn't do anything bad. I you mean, it's mates, so only 20 people would no, be. No, I see. No, what it is. Like that? They disband you, you see, whereas you him out, yeah, him yeah. out, and then your Wait, firm goes down. If he goes to Newport, yeah, all he's got to do is down. dress like fucking Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, you know, you know, fuck you know, that. Not, you know, I won't wear a fucking skirt. Fuck off, Quiggs, man. But, fucking you know, hell, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Quiggs, fucking wake up, man. I'd love to see you fuck in a fucking sake. skirt. You fucking Mrs. Doubtfire, fuck off. <laughs> fucking <laughs> prick. We're only joking. Yeah, Wiggs is being serious. I know he is. Fuck that. Doran, you, what do you do? You're sick in the head. Doran. No, well, what, what would I do? Um, what what now, I'm yeah. going to do, and like, I'm, I'm getting a wig, um, I'm getting a sash as well. No way the fucking police are going to stop me going down and watching my fucking club go up as champions. Not a chance. Well, I'll fucking take you down then. You will. It's fucking going on private transport, public transport, doesn't it? Up the nail! Up the nail. And down the hill. Down the hill. And six, six points for us next season, mate, against you guys. No, I doubt that. I, I know so. I doubt that, Mr. Oh, Pyle. If Lee breaches his football ban, there's every chance he'll be jailed. But he just doesn't care. Fuck it, yeah, let's go fucking Newport, man. I'm not fucking missing this. Fair enough, there might be a bit of fucking scrapping, but... I'm up for it. Fuck it. Fair fucking play. <laughs> 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 fucking love you, little bro. Fair fucking play. But ex Chelsea headhunter Jason Mariner won't be going to any game anytime soon. He's been banned for eight years and now he wants to share the lessons he's learned. Today he's starting with an easy task at Hayes AFC because these youngsters have ambitions to be pros, not cons. I'm not here to preach to you. I certainly, to this day, ain't whiter than white. Some people turn left, some people turn right. I obviously took the wrong turning. And then next thing you know, you're in the melting pot. You're organising and you're sorting things out and you're, you're meeting up with your, you know, your football lads. And it'd be a total, totally different scenario. And all of a sudden, you'd, you'd be doing what you was doing and you can wake up and you've either been cut or bold or black eye or this or bruised or nicked or... But because of the addiction, you go back. But what, what I, I must stress on all of this, because I'm not here to promote football violence, because the end result to all of this is prison. And all the time that you're behind the door, you're rotting. They couldn't give a fuck. They're having a drink in the officer's mess. And then all of a sudden, one day, you wake up and you'll think, boom, you need another goal. So my, my next goal is coming here, you know, talking to you lads. If you could go back, would you choose a different path? No, no, I wouldn't. Be, you know, I am what I am. I take that on the chin. I don't regret anything. Oh. Oh. Hope you got me goal. Kids were good then, weren't they? To me, I believe that, that, that many of them will stay on the right path. So a great self-satisfaction for me. But Jason's sense of satisfaction is nothing compared with what the Rochdale fans are feeling. Today, Mildew and the rest of the crew are living it up large. They've already won promotion to League One, 
and if results go their way, they could be champions. So spirits are high. <laughs> At the match, they were even letting gorillas in. But Foggy and Lee, with his wig and tash, never made it to Newport. And Rochdale went down 2-1. Now we lost. You know, we don't go anywhere, so it's happy days, isn't it? You know? So the big day is over for Rochdale, but it's still to come for Jay Butler. Because it's now so hard to get away with fighting at a match, Casuals United football hooligans like Jay target other events, like the March for England this weekend. Just for pure football lads, and that's what we're all here. And we don't argue about each club or team. It, it's just all of us together as one big firm, you know. And um, I'm not, as I say, I'm not condoning violence. I would never do that. But it's, you know, if they if they want to attack us, we will defend, kind of thing. So. And the new Casuals football tribe will be targeting their common enemy, demonstrators from the left wing. There's a lot of them, but we've had it before. 20 of us have done 90 of them, because you can just punch one and there's 10 of them knocked over. So Jay will put on his Casuals kit and head to Brighton with the new breed of football hooligans. It's no good, like, the goggles steam us, but it's all over the place. It's more of a fashion accessory, really. <laughs> Trouble is pretty much guaranteed. And the casuals will have some of that. <laughs> it's the day of the March for England in Brighton. A celebration of nationalism that now has a reputation for serious disorder. That's why Casuals United football hooligans from clubs across the country rocked up in force. And Jay Butler, one of the casuals, says the cops were waiting for them. Sunday morning, we was having a breakfast at the, um, at the old beef eater, like, and we, we left and we got pulled over by the old Bill in the car. So they, they was watching us at the beef eater the next morning and they just kind of said, you know, where are you going? Um, you're not going to Brighton, are you? I was like, fuck's sake. But the warning was a red rag to a bull. Me and, me and this other lad, we thought, well, you know, fuck it, we're just going to go amongst them. And um, they were fucking all around us. And with trouble in the offing, Jay didn't want any cameras filming what he might get up to. Two hundred joined the march for England, and around four hundred were on the other side of the slamming match. This is now exactly the sort of event Jay and the casuals target. They can't get away with violence at football matches, but here they might just escape justice. Fascist off our street. Jay says he went undercover at the march, pretending to be a left-wing demonstrator. No, no one noticed us or anything, which was weird, like, because, uh, you know, I stuck out like a wart on a cock amongst those. The cost of the march isn't just widespread disorder, 
Controlling the mayhem set the police back half a million quid. And when they thought it was all over, Jay claimed an unlikely victory for Casuals United. You know, all, all the you know all the paranoia we installed in them, thinking we're around them, and the police shitting themselves. We, we used the Met as our firm. You know what I mean? You know, those, those licensed bullies were out smashing them for a change, and it was all because of us, you know, like little puppeteers pulling the strings. So we, we were just pissing ourselves, laughing. But in Rochdale, football hooligan Lee Doran isn't nearly so chipper. Today, they're celebrating promotion to League One. But although he's on his third football banning order, he's still gutted about missing the Newport game. On Friday morning, um, the police knocked on um, my house. Stupid as I am, um, the, the week before, I'd put something on, on my banter, banter group, and obviously they've, they've read that, what, what I've put, um, and come to my house to stop me from going. Police are all over me, they're all on top of us and that. I'm even getting bots now um, by, the, by the old bill, but there you go. They're on top, man. As soon as I come into view, police with fucking cameras are about, you know what I mean? It does piss you off at the end of the day, but that's part and parcel of being a fucking hooligan, I suppose. have that feeling. I, I, I say like once a hooligan, always a hooligan. Once you've experienced what it's like, then there's no coming away from it. Back in Brighton, it's the end of the March for England. The police kept a lid on the demo, but they couldn't possibly cover every single back street. And according to Jay, his casuals teammates got what they came for. Well, on Facebook, there's a few clips of what went off that day, so um, here's one here. I'll just load it up for you. P pure porn, this is. Hulu porn. <laughs> OK, so that's all our lads there. We've just come out of the Dorset pub. That, that's the lefties there, launching stuff. And there's just, like, a lot of um, chairs being thrown and furniture between them, and our lads stand their ground. See that? As soon as the old bill come, they're fucking off. You know, it's almost like they use the police come in as an excuse just to retreat and get out of there. That, that's what it is. Our lads are still stood there. They're not running anywhere. And it's, it's quite fucking nasty, actually, when you see it on the ground. The cops say the people in the hoodies provoked this mindless violence. But the casuals were quick to fight back. These boys here, out of the whole country, there's a tiny, tiny fraction in it, and they're standing up for what's right. There's a lot of boys there, there's the Cardiff, Millwall, the, the, you know, West Ham, there's um, quite a few who went. But, I mean, no one will fucking come near them boys, like, you know what I mean? Fair play to them. We're just going to see bigger numbers of us lot coming up there each year. So this could be the face of a new generation of football hooligans in the 21st century. I love football, you know, all the football lads, it's great loyalty and we've got all the football lads in a different thing now, so it's brilliant, you know. Yeah, just like a big family it is. The next Chelsea headhunter, Jason Mariner, says whatever the police do, Yobbs will always find a way to fight, even if it's not worth going to jail for. I think there comes a time when all of a sudden it hits you and you think, fucking hell, what's, what's the point of this anymore, do you know what I mean? Just because it's finished for me. It ain't finished for other people, you know, and it ain't finished for the younger lot. That mob will find a way to meet the other mob, or whatever it may be. All I'll say to them is be careful, because as you well know, Big Brother's watching you.